Well, everyone, today is your lucky day. You actually ended up buying a 14 inch MacBook Pro and this is a, a crazy purchase. This is a great investment, I think. It has so much capability. It really is one of the best MacBooks right now. So let's go ahead and break down if you're a new user of macOS or this is your first time owning a MacBook Pro 14 inch. This is a quick beginner's guide. I'm not gonna cover every single little tiny thing. I'm sure you know how a keyboard works and everything like that, but there still is a lot of capability within these MacBooks. And if you're not too familiar with the 14 inch MacBook Pro, you should kind of be familiar at this point. So starting off with the front, you just have the plaid. I mean, there's nothing crazy with it. It's the aluminum Apple logo here. It does not light up, but it's totally okay. You do have that little tab at the bottom, which makes it easier for you to open up your screen if you want to. Now let's cover up the ports because the ports is the crazy part. So on this side of the MacBook, you have the new MagSafe charger, which came straight into the box. No USB Type-C to USB Type-C, but this is still a charging port, which is great. You have two Thunderbolt USB Type-C ports. So this is great if you want to charge up your MacBook, add a dongle, all that good stuff. Headphone jack on the right side. You do have a fan at the bottom right here. So keep in mind if you're ever covering these things, sometimes it can kind of overheat. But luckily for you, these MacBooks probably won't ever do that because they are performance heavy machines. Now on the other side, we have an SD card slot, which is probably my favorite feature of these new MacBooks, a USB Type-C port, which is the same one on the other side. So all that capability you have there is the same one here as well. And you have an HDMI port, which I'm sure most of you know, it allows you to connect to TVs, you know, monitors, different things like that. But nowadays, USB Type-C ports, if your you know, display supports it, you can connect to them here too, which is really awesome. Now on the bottom of the MacBook, there's nothing super crazy. You will really never have to tinker around with anything here. You have the feet of the MacBooks, which can sometimes be dirty. You can wipe them down, especially before reselling them. I'd recommend wiping it down. But these help so you, know, you can get more air into the fans and everything like that. But typically, you don't ever have to worry about the bottom. The new MacBook Pro logo down here, which looks beautiful, is a nice touch as well. And then that's pretty much it on the outside. Now we can go ahead and open up like I mentioned. So to open it up, you just grab the side like this and you can go and bring it up just like so. It's very easy. You'll have the display up top, but let's go and cover up the bottom real quick. So you have the keyboard here. Now the new 14 inch MacBooks do not have any touch bar here. So before there used to be a screen, now it's just a standard keyboard with the black layout on the back, which, which looks beautiful. Now, like I mentioned, I'm sure most of you know how to use keyboards by now. I will leave a couple links down in the description. I will leave a link on how to, you know, a ton of different keyboard shortcuts that if you're familiar, if you're new to Mac OS or MacBooks, I'd recommend looking at things like copy, things like pasting, different things like that I'd recommend you to look into, as well as the magic trackpad. So this is a force touch trackpad. It's not an actual, you know, button that clicks in. It's just a vibration motor. So there's a lot of different things you can do with this specific MacBook as well. If you ever want to click, you just hold down and click like this. You can also set it to where you double tap it clicks as well. A right click essentially is two buttons. So if you ever wanted to right click on something, two buttons here. And there's so many other things you can customize with Mac OS. Doing this brings all the apps. And now you can't see my display, but I will leave another link in the description, I think from Apple, that showcases different, you know, magic trackpad techniques and things like that, which is really cool. Now you have the speakers on the side, which are amazing. You also have a new built-in studio microphone, which is really good. It was on the M1 MacBook Pro as well, but apparently this one was way more better. And you also have Touch ID fingerprint sensor right here. If you set it up in your initial setup, you should have it there. If not, you can always set it up later. So now we make it to the actual MacBook itself. So you should have it already set up like I mentioned. If you haven't set up, it's a very easy process. There's a lot of personal information there that you have to kind of tinker around to yourself. So keep that in mind. But here we have the 14 inch display. We have a beautiful notch, which still looks very, very good. And I'll go and break down the initial setup. So now we do have, you know, a little bit of a bigger display. So the display now cuts off to the corners and there's also the notch with a better 1080p camera, which is beautiful. And with that new studio built-in quality mic, it's going to make the whole entire experience so much better. Now on top of that, the display is now ProMotion. So what does that mean? Well, now refreshes at 120 hertz. So this makes this display that much better and that much, I guess, smoother. And to be honest, if you get this MacBook, you're going to be future-proof forever. Most MacBooks before were 60 hertz. Most iMacs are 60, all iMacs are still 60 hertz. So by getting this, you're going to be getting a display that's better than most monitors and displays out there to be completely honest. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go and kind of go through a basic breakdown of Mac OS. I just did a video about Mac OS Monterey and it's pretty much the same setup. So up top, we have our menu bar. This is going to be persistent with pretty much any application you have and every application will be tuned a little bit differently. We'll get into that in a second. So always at the top left, you'll have your Apple logo. So this will just give you some basic information you know, about this Mac, uh, system preferences, system settings we'll get into in a second. If you want to open up your app store, if you want to force quit an application, which you don't really have to do too often, if you want to lock the screen, log out, shut down your MacBook, you can do everything right here. Now within Finder, as you can see, I'm not even on Finder, so why am I seeing this? 
Well, this is going to change per application. And to be honest, the rest of these things will change depending on the application you're on. So for example, if I go into Safari, if I go here, you'll see this change to Safari. Why did it do that? Because every single application is different. So in this case, you'll just kind of have to kind of familiarize yourself with every single one of these options. And some applications may not have any of these things open. Some applications may have all of them. So keep that in mind. For example, if I make my way over to the App Store, again, it does not have all the options here, but typically if you click on under the App Store, it shows you preferences and different things you can go ahead and modify here too. So hopping out of here and hopping out of here, we'll go and make our way down again. So these are all pretty much going to change depending on the application you're on. If I click on the desktop, you'll see it changes again. Now here is our notch. So our mouse browser actually goes behind the notch, which is an issue because if you add too many status bar icons here, they can cut into here, but we won't really worry about that too much. Now on the right side, continuing on, these can be modified and you can change these, which I'll get into in a second. But typically on stock, this is a brand new 14 inch MacBook. So we're starting off at the same spot. You'll have your battery right here. So you can see your battery percentage. You can tinker around with your battery preferences, which we'll get into in a second. You have your Wi-Fi connection here too. And you also have your search bar. So this is spotlight search. You can also enable this by clicking on command and space bar. Now, why is this important? Well, if you ever wanna search for anything on your MacBook, you know, cause we can't cover everything in this video. So if there's ever anything you wanna look for, hey, like I had this file that I forgot, it was called, you know, Word document or whatever. Well, you would go ahead and start typing it out. And not only, I don't have anything on this MacBook, but you can see even when I type in Word, it already searches up a ton of different things that I have. So it'll show me Word, some other word things and not only does it show me just not what's on this macbook but even things online too with related searches so that's really awesome if you're ever searching for a file things within a pdf i used to use this if i wanted to look at notes and stuff a very cool process very cool thing for sure and it also works for app stores and also works for different apps so if i type in you know like safari i can start typing in safari like this and it'll go and show me the application right there and i can click enter and it'll open up safari for me so that's a very awesome tool. I recommend clicking here and searching for things if you like messages and different things like that. I'm sure you know by now. Now the next portion is Control Center. So what this does is it allows us to quickly toggle you know, our Wi-Fi focus mode, which is now new with macOS Monterey, which is essentially a new do not disturb mode. Bluetooth, AirDrop, our display and brightness, which is really cool. So we can increase and decrease our brightness right here instead of clicking on the toggles on our specific keyboard. Same thing with sound. If we wanna increase or decrease our sound, we can do the same thing here. Now on top of that, let's say we want to bring our display toggle right up here. What we can do is we can go and drag this display toggle here and bring it straight onto our menu bar like this. So personally, I actually do prefer my menu bar to have the display and to have that sound toggle up there too. They'll still stay here, but it just makes it a little bit easier. And I actually do prefer this. So again, the drag and drop, you just click it down, wiggle it around with the other finger and you should be able to bring it up. So that's really it here. If you're ever playing any songs, they'll come up right here and we can exit out by clicking here. This next portion is just Siri. I just have it disabled for now. I'm sure most of you know how Siri works. Now at the very end, we will get into our widgets. So this isn't really new with iOS or macOS Monterey. It did come with the previous version, but it has gotten more enhanced. And with these new MacBooks with the 120 hertz display, everything just looks so much smoother, except scrolling through here, which is pretty interesting. So you cannot go and drag these widgets to the home screen, which is very annoying, but you do have the ability of modifying these. You can click edit widgets down here. You can bring new widgets here too, which is really cool. You can search through these. Now there's a endless amount of possibilities, but not only do widgets live here, but if you ever get any notifications or anything, they will also come right here as well. So I don't really mess around with this too much. I don't really look at it. I'm really good at looking at my notifications, but if you ever miss a notification or just wanna see what's going on with your MacBook, you can click on the date and time right here and they will kind of populate your notifications here, which is beautiful. So we can go and hop out of here. Now let's go and make our way over to our dock. So this is going to be completely different per person. This is a brand new MacBook. So if you just booted yours up, it'll look the same. So basically this just houses all the main applications that you can use. So if you go ahead and look through, I mean, we have Safari or Safari browser, you know, Finder, and different applications like that. This stays consistent. You can make this go away in your settings application, which we'll get into in a second. It's also down here too. So you can go ahead and add applications. You can delete applications. So let's say I don't want Apple TV here. You just right click on your specific trackpad like this. You go and click options. You click remove from dock and that will go away from here. You can also add applications too via your app manager. So if you want, if you go like this on your trackpad, there used to be a button for it too, but I guess they kind of removed it, which is totally okay. So if you just get into this center right here, which again, you just go like this on your trackpad, you can look at the keyboard shortcuts in the description, you'll come into your app manager. So here you can also search up for any applications that you want to look for. But if you look, you can see you have all these applications here. You can maneuver through all these pages. So let's say I wanted to bring Apple TV back down here. 
Well, I would just grab the Apple TV app like this and I would bring it back to my dock and I would let go and you can see it pretty much brought exactly where it was. You can do this with all these applications here, even with files. If I had a file within Finder app and I don't think I have any files here, but you can also see your applications right here as well. Let's say I wanna bring chess, I can bring chess, bring it down here, same exact story. So that pretty much covers it up here. Now, again, there's nothing super crazy at the end. We have our trash can bin, but our first app right here, Finder, is super, super important. This is the application I use the most. This essentially is your file browser. So I'm not gonna go through every single little thing, but if you're ever looking for files or anything like that, they may be under your documents or downloads, but you, you can always click search up here and search for all, all your files. I'm sure most of you have used a file browser before. Our iPhones have it, Androids have it, Windows has it, all you know things that I use it nowadays but this is where most of your applications will be stored. If you ever want an exit out of an application, you have a couple different options here. So you can click the exit button, that'll exit out of an application. You can minimize it. So if you click minimize, it doesn't exit out, it just goes away. You can open it back right up here. Click right here and it'll open it back up. Or you can full screen that application, which is that third toggle. I've never seen more than three toggles, so maybe this is the only ones I've seen. So if you full screen it, it pretty much makes everything go away. The beautiful thing of it is that it actually kind of hides the notch. So you can see the notch is kind of hidden, but you can access the notch in the menu bar by kind of hovering over here and you'll see the same persistent menu bar that we talked about before. Now, if you want to exit full screen, you can click the escape button, or if you're still in full screen, you can go and click this little drop down button right here and you can go and exit out of it as well. So if you want to exit out of an application, click here and that pretty much covers up that. Now, another big thing is within our Apple browser, you know, our Apple icon, and if we click about this Mac, now, this will tell you everything about your MacBook. So you can see I have the 14-inch MacBook, 16 gigs of RAM. If you're ever planning on reselling your MacBook or if you ever want to just remember which MacBook you have, this is where you're going to find this information. If anybody or not anybody, if Apple support, you should not give your serial number to anyone else, I don't think. But under Apple support, if they're ever asking for your serial number, it's going to be right here. You can copy it right here. But another big thing is right here under software update. So what software update does is it essentially will keep your MacBook up to date on the latest version of Mac OS. And with a new MacBook like this, I would always recommend you to just keep your MacBook up to date. The day you open it, it's probably already outdated with software. So you just want to see if there's an update. Now I'm not even connected to the Wi-Fi, but if there is an update here and it says download the latest update, I would recommend downloading it and installing it. That is pretty much the most important thing I would recommend you doing in this specific case. So. That pretty much covers it up with the update. This is probably one of the most important areas you're probably going to look at. But actually, it's not even as important as the next one. Actually, the software update is pretty important. We exit out of here like we mentioned before. We click on the Apple icon and we click on System Preferences. This is where you can modify a lot of different things on your MacBook. So I'm going to hop out of here. This is what you're going to see as soon as you open it up. You'll probably see your name here and you'll see a bunch of different options. Now, some of the main things you may want to go ahead and actually tinker around with is under General Settings. So if we click here, you'll see you can change up a lot of different things, your default web browser, whether you're on light mode or dark mode. If you click on light mode, you can see it becomes light again. If you click on dark, it just kind of dims everything down, which kind of looks a little bit better for me. And there's a ton of different options. So I would recommend you to actually look through every single one of these toggles and kind of familiarize yourself with the whole entire layout. Because most of the time, to be completely honest, I only mess around with two things here, which is display and typically these two desktop and screensavers, sometimes document menu bar, but I also go down to display sometimes. Really everything else I haven't really messed around with. But another thing I wanna to showcase to you is under displays. So if we click displays right here, you can see that we pretty much have the same type of layout as previous macOS versions. You can monitor your brightness and all this stuff. But now under refresh type, we have this new option. So like I mentioned, we have ProMotion on our MacBook. If you ever want to disable it or if it seems like it's too fast for you, you can always bring it back down to 60 hertz. It saves a little bit of battery, but I think for a majority of you, staying with ProMotion is probably the better way to go because it looks so beautiful. Now again, we can click back here and we can even make our way over to our software update panel here too, which is really awesome. We can go and click back. And like I mentioned, I would recommend looking through all of these different settings because there's just so many here. We're going to be here all day if we go through every single one. But a majority of the time, you just mess around with a couple of them. If we click under this battery segment right here, this actually gives you a really good breakdown of your battery health and your battery life. So these MacBooks have tremendous battery life. It's insane. So if you can see your usage history here, you can see your actual battery and battery settings. So if you ever want to you know, turn on low power mode, if you want to turn off you know, how your dim your display brightness goes and all that, you can change it here too, which is really cool. And like I mentioned, the battery options are just endless. There's so many options here. 
well, hence why they call it settings. So again, we can make our way back. So again, if you ever wanna change anything on your MacBook, this is where you wanna go. So you wanna go under Apple logo here, and System Preferences, and you'll come straight here. So now we can exit out of this. Now there's standard things that your MacBook typically, you know, you wanna do in your MacBook, things like screen recording, things like screenshotting, things like recording audio. Well, luckily for us, there's an application that does all of this. So if we come back into our little menu bar right here, if we click under Other, which is right here, you'll see a ton of different applications. This includes Time Machine, which allows you to handle backups, Siri shortcuts, but right here we have QuickTime Player. So what we wanna do is we wanna click on that application, and what's going to happen is you may not even see it come up, which is so weird, it's like a silent thing in the background, but you'll see that it's open because if you look right here, it'll show up right here, and sometimes it'll show up right here too, but I guess it doesn't do it in this case. So what we wanna do is right up top, you'll see that the menu bar changed. Like we mentioned earlier, these things change per application. So what we can do is we can click file, and now we can create a new movie, we can create a new audio, we can even screen record on our MacBook. So what we can do is we can click new screen recording, and it's going to allow us to either screen record this portion, or we can screen record the whole entire thing, or the entire screen, and then once we're ready, we can go and click capture, and once we see this little pop-up, so I took a screenshot by accident, but QuickTime Player has a lot of different options built in. I will probably make a whole separate video just dedicated to QuickTime Player because you can record your screen, you can take screenshots, you can watch videos, make videos, there's just so many things here. So that's another application I'd probably recommend you get familiar with. Now, things like installing applications and downloading apps and all that stuff, all that will be handled within your app store. Now, like I mentioned, my Wi-Fi isn't working for some reason, which is so random. I'll have to fix that. Maybe macOS issue, I'm not too sure. The App Store is where you're pretty much going to go and do all that. It's very, very similar to the iPhone App Store or Android Google Play Store. Pretty much the same exact thing. So you'll get the same type of capability from this App Store as well. And as always, if you ever want to get any information from anything, you can always right-click and change some things going on. You can create a new folder by clicking New Folder. You can go and get info on certain things by clicking on the Get Info. You can see all sorts of things here. You can change your desktop wallpaper. But typically, as of this point, you should have a good understanding of macOS and your 14-inch MacBook, and you should be good to go for the most part. Again, there's so many other things within macOS. There's just so installing applications, doing so many different things. But this is a good, you know, core understanding of your specific MacBook, and hopefully you understand it by now. If you guys have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.